Greetings, it's Eric Backer, I'm back to you again. New Zealand naturopath, author of Candida Crusher. Thanks for coming back and checking out my video. We're going to talk about grains and starchy foods today. I don't know how many videos I've seen, how many blogs I've looked at, and how many people I've talked to who think that all grains are completely unacceptable on the yeast infection diet. They think you can't eat bread, you can't eat potatoes, you can't eat starchy foods, that somehow uh, these foods are toxic, they make you sick, they may turn you into some sort of a weirdo, or that you know you turn into a, a, a Frankenstein overnight, or I don't know what, you know, some sort of crazy stuff like that. But I can tell you now, this is a lot of crap, all right? I've learned from experience that you need to try these things for yourself, because one size doesn't fit all. By heating and modifying the starch, it can change the way that the gut reacts to this starch. It can change the way how it ferments the starch in the bowel, how it breaks it down, how it, absor how it absorbs it. I learned this a long time ago with bananas, for example, or bananas. I think in New York they say bananas. So we know that bananas, for example, are not a great thing to eat with candida. But I can tell you now, green bananas are usually perfectly fine. Okay, so if you get a plantain banana or those green ones, you might have seen them sometimes at the markets. Go to the markets where the Samoan or the Hawaiians or the Tongan people go to, you know, the big people, the, the wonderful people, the great smiles and play good music. Those people often eat taro and yams and, and green bananas and fish. Well, the green bananas tend to be okay with candida, especially if they're cooked in coconut milk. Um, and I've not found that to be a problem with a lot of people. So that blows your theory right out the water. You can't have bananas with yeast infection, all right? But if you try and have a yellow banana, all right, the ones grown in Mexico or Guatemala in the tropics, uh, they go really yellow and brown. That can make you feel like crap. You can get bloating and gas and headaches out of those. And they can also uh, create strong histamine-like reactions in the body. So some people can have developed strong allergies towards bananas depending on the stage of ripeness when they're eating them. And that depends a lot on the sugar content and the chemical content because there are lots of different chemicals in fruits and vegetables. Right? Uh, Cornell University did research on this years ago looking at, at fruit and vegetables and the chemical contents and how they affect humans. So any kind of vegetable or fruit will affect you different depending on the stage of ripeness, you know, i.e. how it's picked when you eat it, and also B, how it's processed in terms of heat. Okay, so when you read something, say the, a specific carbo carbohydrate diary, uh, SCD, for example, book, or the GAPS book, when they say you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you know, you need to sort of look at it and think, well, what about if I put chickpeas in the pressure cooker? Or what about if I bake potatoes you know, at a high temperature? How will they sit with my tummy? Now, lots and lots of people have come back to me and said, Eric, that's funny. When I pressure cook chickpeas, I could eat them perfectly well, but when I boiled them and had hummus, I had gas like an elephant. I was farting the whole day like a bullfrog. So that could be a problem. Okay, If you've got a lot of gas because of a starchy food, think how it was cooked. Was it warm when you ate it? Was it cold when you ate it? How is it modified by heat? How is it cooked? If it was a fruit, at what stage of ripeness was it picked? How is it prepared? Right? So that's very interesting um, food for thought for you. So think about those things. Before you discount a food immediately because it's starchy or a grain, try and modify it. Right? See, see what happens to the tummy. See what the bowel motions are like. See what the gas is like. See what the discomfort is like. And you might be pleasantly surprised. It might be perfectly okay. Thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to click on the link below if you haven't got my Candida report. And please subscribe. Thank you.